So you're thinking about the Legal Shield gun owner supplement? You wanna know how that stacks up to attorneys on retainer? Stand by for my analysis. Hey guys, attorney Mark Victor here. Today I am going to review the Legal Shield Gun Owners Supplement right here. I got it right in front of me with some notes and things highlighted. Now, let me start by saying this is just the Gun Owners Supplement. I don't have the full policy for Legal Shield. I haven't reviewed that. This is just the supplement. Okay, so it's only two pages, so it's pretty easy to read and understand. Let me start with the first page here because it raised the question immediately in my mind like who's your lawyer i couldn't tell from reading this i looked at subsection a and it says the member may receive unlimited toll-free phone calls for legal advice regarding the using and carrying of firearms the member may receive unlimited toll-free phone calls all right that's a little weird. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that. But then it says these calls are available to the extent the provider law firm deems it needed to adequately advise the member on the legal issue. Who's the provider law firm? Why do they get to decide? These phone calls are available to the extent the provider law firm deems it needed to adequately advise the member on the legal matter. Okay, so how much you get to talk to the provider law firm isn't a function of how much you want to talk to them. It's a function of the extent to which the provider law firm deems it needed to adequately advise the member. I look at B, member may consult with a provider attorney immediately after use of a firearm in a firearm incident on a 24 hour per day basis by calling the emergency number. Okay, I don't know who the provider attorney is. I don't know what their deal is with Legal Shield. I don't know how much they're getting paid. I don't know anything about that. It's certainly not clear to me that you get to select whoever the provider attorney is. Whoever it is, you get to talk to them as long as they deem it needed to adequately advise you on the legal matter. Okay, a little bit weird, but moving right along. Let me get to one of my most fun sections with so many of these deals. Right at the beginning in the second paragraph where it says gun owner in quotes. Gun owner services include any firearm incident which is any incident where the member lawfully discharges or displays a firearm for the purpose of using the firearm as a weapon to stop a threat whether the member discharges the firearm or not. Okay, so it's gotta be a lawful discharge. But if you take a look on the second page of the contract under general provisions, section C, here's what it says. Trial defense services do not cover any lawsuit involving the member's use of a firearm, including a firearm incident in the commission of any crime. Okay, so criminal acts are excluded. I should pause on this a little bit and just make it clear. It doesn't actually say that they can't represent you if you're charged with a crime, but you gotta lawfully discharge the weapon and it can't be a crime. So this requires them to sort of make a decision at the beginning. Is this a lawful use of self-defense or is it a criminal act? If it's a criminal act, it's not covered. Well, who decides this? And what if they guess wrong? I can tell you one thing, if you're charged with a crime, that means that the prosecutor and maybe a bunch of people on the grand jury decided that they think you committed a crime. Prosecutors aren't dumb. Sometimes we have differences of opinions with them, but they've been around, they've gone to law school, they have access to experts as well. They generally don't bring cases unless they conclude there's a reasonable likelihood of conviction. So the prosecutor thinks a crime is committed. If Legal Shield agrees, no coverage for you. Also, what happens if you take a plea? Certainly seems to me now it's clear you've committed a criminal act because you've taken a plea. Does your coverage end then? If so, what happens at sentencing? Who's going to represent you there? I don't know how they would represent this. I would talk about appeals here, but I'm going to save that for a little bit later. Also, one thing that's clear from this provision, if it's a bad shoot, say you tried to act in self-defense, but you blew it, you screwed it up, it's an illegal act. Okay, seems clear from the Legal Shield gun owner supplement, no coverage for you. So if what you're looking for 
is to have an attorney provided for you in the event you get charged with a crime unless they can make a good argument that it's actually a legal act of self-defense if it looks like a bad shoot or maybe even a questionable shoot it certainly seems very clear to me It'd be very easy for legal shield to say sorry you committed a criminal act no coverage for you. Okay, so moving right along, back to the beginning under gun owner services, take a look at the last sentence. Firearm incident does not include discharges or displays that are negligent. All right, so this is a pretty standard exclusion in many of these competitor type contracts, many of the insurance based ones, where they say, hey, if it's an unlawful discharge, negligent discharge, accidental discharge, sorry, wholesale exclusion. Do I need to remind you that attorneys on retainer does not exclude criminal acts and does not exclude negligent discharges? Okay, so moving right along under the category of things we could call exclusions. Did you know if your incident happens in a place where firearms are prohibited, think sensitive places, right? We know the litigation going on right now in our country as a result of the Bruin decision where so many anti-gun states are trying really hard to deem maybe their entire city or even their entire state or most of it anyway as a sensitive place, meaning that you can't take your firearm there. What happens if your self-defense incident occurs there. Well, if you're a member of the Legal Shield Gun Owners Supplement Program, let me read from section C on the first page. Kind of in the middle of the paragraph, here's what it says. A covered lawsuit is a criminal or civil lawsuit filed in a state or federal district court arising from a firearm incident involving a member in good standing. If the member is in a place where he or she she is legally permitted to possess and carry concealed or open his or her firearm. Okay, so that seems pretty clear. If you're in a sensitive area, if you're not allowed to carry a firearm, no coverage for you. But you can also look at the next page under general provisions. Section D, here's what it says. Trial defense services do not cover any firearm incident that involves taking a firearm to a location that is prohibited by federal, state, or local law. Such services are available under the preferred member discount. Okay, just reiterates the fact that if your incident happens somewhere where firearms are prohibited, no coverage for you. Again, I'll remind you, Attorneys on Retainer does not exclude incidents that occur in sensitive areas. Your self-defense incident happens in a place where guns are prohibited. We don't care. We'll still defend you. Okay, so continuing with the parade of exclusions with the Legal Shield Gun Owners Supplement, take a look at General Provisions Subsection E. Here's what it says. This supplement does not cover any lawsuit, incident, criminal investigation, or prosecution arising from a firearm incident by the member against the member's current or former family member, household, or a dating relationship, period. Okay, think domestic violence exclusion. Okay, this is a huge category. Lots of times these types of incidents occur between people who you're familiar with, right? Think ex-spouse, think current boyfriend, girlfriend, former boyfriend, girlfriend, parent, child, brothers, something like that. You have a self-defense incident involving any of those relationships and you are part of the legal shield and you got the gun owner supplement, no coverage for you. If you're with AOR, no problem. General provisions section F, quote, services under this supplement are not applicable for on-duty firearm incidents and or the use of force by law enforcement and or security officers. All right, so if you're on duty and you got this program, no coverage for you. Again, you got attorneys on retainer, no problem. Okay, remember earlier I made the point that because actual criminal acts are excluded and what happens if they start to cover you and then you take a plea and who's going to appear for your sentencing? Well, I normally would say who would do your appeal, but in the case of 
Legal Shield's gun owner supplement, they're pretty clear. They're not doing your appeal. Page two up at the top, quote, trial defense services does not include any appeals of a trial court's decision. All right, so they're pretty clear in here. You need an appeal, no coverage for you, at least with the Legal Shield gun owner's supplement. But then I found this also very interesting with the gun owner's supplement. Take a look at the first page. Section C, under trial defense services. Let me read it for you. Here's what it says. If the member is the named defendant in a covered lawsuit, the member may receive 60 total hours of trial defense for any covered lawsuits filed during that membership year. Covered lawsuit is a criminal or civil lawsuit filed in state or federal district court arising from a firearm incident involving a member in good standing. If the member is in a place where he or she is legally permitted to possess and carry concealed or open his or her firearm. These 60 hours consist of up to 20 hours of pre-trial time and 40 hours of trial time, end quote. Okay, so at the bottom of that page, in the middle, of paragraph C, picking up, here's what it says. Trial time is limited to up to eight hours per trial day and may include attorney time both in and out of the courtroom. Okay, so even if you are covered here, you've run the gauntlet of exclusions, your self-defense incident, isn't a criminal act and it didn't happen in a sensitive place and it wasn't domestic violence and all the other exclusions are now cleared and they're going to provide you services. You get 60 hours of total time, 20 hours pre-trial in 40 hours trial. I don't know if you've ever tried a case before, but I've tried many cases. 20 hours pre-trial, that is hugely inadequate to prepare any kind of a felony case for trial, and then 40 hours total for trial, and only eight hours a day, which includes your out of court days? I don't know about these lawyers, but when Andy and I try cases, it's not uncommon that we're still at the office at 11 p.m. And we start pretty early. We get there early because there are witnesses to talk to, there are things that need to be done. Oftentimes judges want to hold some hearings before the jury comes in. Eight hours? Are you kidding me? So what happens if you go over your time? Does your attorney just leave you hanging and do nothing? No, the attorney has an ethical obligation to actually defend you. But what happens with you financially if you got the gun owner's supplement? Well, the answer is on page two, section E, right above the section that says general provisions. Here's what it says. Preferred member discount. The member will receive a 25% discount of the provider law firm's standard hourly rate for additional services in a covered lawsuit or for gun owner services not otherwise provided by this supplement. All right, so it seems pretty clear to me that whoever your lawyer is, doesn't seem like you get to pick or even know in advance, but whoever that provider law firm is, Whatever their standard rates are, and we have no idea reading from the supplement, whatever those are, they're going to charge you a rate equal to 25% off their regular rate. That's going to be a lot of hours if you have any kind of a significant trial going on, not just for the trial, but also for pre-trial, because 20 hours pre-trial isn't very much to do a major litigation. Just as a little footnote, had you been a member of the Attorneys on Retainer program, you wouldn't have any of these exclusions. You wouldn't have to worry about whether or not you blew it. As long as you intended in good faith to act in self-defense and you made that case to us and say, yep, I tried, but I blew it. No problem. We're going to handle it. As long as you meet our three criteria, right? You're charged with a crime or you're reasonably concerned about being charged with a crime. The thing that happened, happened after you signed up in Attorneys on Retainer. And you can reasonably come to us and say, Mark, I tried to act in self-defense. Even if you blew it and it's actually a criminal act, we're going to handle it without any of these exclusions, without any of these caps, all the way through a jury trial. Not only that, but if there's a need for an appeal, we're going to handle that as well. And if you get sued civilly, we're going to handle that as well even if it goes all the way to a trial. You're not gonna have to pay any expenses, no investigator fees, and all of your trial-related costs are included with attorneys on retainer. Very different 
than the Legal Shield Gun Owners Supplement, which seems pretty clear. You're going to wind up paying something here as soon as those 60 hours are used up by whoever your lawyer is. You're going to start paying 25% discount off of whatever their rate is. Okay, a couple other things about the Gun Owners Supplement from our friends at Legal Shield. If you take a look at the first page under paragraph B, at the end, second to the last sentence, here's what it says. 24-7 emergency access does not cover legal services associated with the making, posting, or obtaining bond, bail, or other security required for release, end quote. All right, so don't bother us with anything regarding your release or bond. Certainly seems pretty clear to me that at least with the gun owner's supplement, there's no help there. Okay, with attorneys on retainer, we're gonna do everything we can to get you out of custody up to and including putting $50,000 up towards that bond, right? If it's a cash bond and it's 50 or less, we're just gonna get that posted and get you out. If it's a secure bond and it's over 50, yes, you're gonna have to provide some collateral, but we'll put up up to $50,000 to make that happen. And no, there's no limit on how many times you can talk to us, nor do you have to wait for us to call you. You can actually call us, no problem. There's some other questions just sort of lingering in my mind about this program. What about other illegal weapons? I mean, it is called the gun owner's supplement, but what if there's a knife being used? Or what if there's no weapon being used? What if you're a prohibited possessor? Certainly seems to me probably there's no help here from the gun owner's supplement, but I don't know how legal shield or a court would interpret this contract. What if the weapon's illegal? Seems like there's a reading of this contract that if your weapon is illegal for any reason, there are many reasons why your weapon that maybe you think is legal could actually be deemed to be an illegal weapon. Certainly seems to me that there's at least a good argument that you're not gonna get any help from Legal Shield if you got the gun owner supplement, if you got an illegal weapon, but you'll have to ask them for a certain answer on that point. And then lastly, as if we haven't had enough exclusions and limitations already, if you look at the second page under general provisions, subsection A, here's what it says. All general provisions, services, limitations, and exclusions of your contract apply to this supplement. Well, so it certainly seems that these aren't all of the limitations that apply to your supplement. Those are just the ones that were included in the supplement seems like there's the general legal shield policy out there which itself has other limitations and exclusions that would apply to anybody who has the gun owners supplement as well all right so i've only been talking to the gun community now for 30 years i think i got a pretty good idea of what it is you are looking for you're a competent responsible firearms owner and what you're worried about is that time may come where you pull out your firearm and act in self-defense. What you want, whether you get charged or not, whether it's a good shoot, a questionable shoot, or a bad shoot, what you want is to have an attorney standing by, right? If you've acted in self-defense, as I've already discussed in this video, you're gonna be covered without any costs or additional expenses to you with the Attorneys on Retainer program. If that's what you're looking for to make sure you got a team of lawyers who you know, who you trust, who are experienced, who are pro Second Amendment, who are pro freedom, who are playing to win. Attorneys on Retainer, I think, is the best product in the market. Check us out. Don't take my word for it. And by the way, there are many other things that the Attorney on Retainer client gets besides just self-defense. I see that Legal Shield Gun Owner Supplement gives you a 25% off the mystery lawyer's rates. We give you a 35% discount off of our published rates for non-self-defense matters. That's right. Attorneys on Retainer doesn't just handle self-defense related matters. There's also non-self-defense related matters. Imagine you get charged with any felony. Think aggravated DUI or any other felony. What if you get sued? for something that has nothing to do with firearms. Think breach of contract or defamation. You know, anybody can sue you for anything. What if you get involved in a 
personal injury matter. Instead of hiring one of those lawyers with the billboards and the commercials who say, if we don't win, you get nothing. Okay, you can hire us. We're your law firm and we'll still give you a 35% discount in all of these cases off of the amount that would be our portion of the recovery. We want to be your law firm. We want you to know and trust and understand who it is who's going to be representing you. You can get more information about our law firm really easy. Go to attorneysforfreedom.com. We've been in business 27 years. Check us out. Check our reviews out. You can Google us. Don't just be limited to our law firm. Do your homework. Get your information. Want more information about the program that the Attorneys for Freedom Law Firm administers called the Attorneys on Retainer program? Go to attorneysonretainer.us. Our entire fee agreement is there. I've also done a critique of our own program. We'll and maybe include a link to that video at the bottom of this. So if you want to see just as fiery and ferocious review, tearing apart the Attorneys on Retainer program, and exposing the weak points of our own program, check it out. We want you to know exactly what it is you get with Attorneys on Retainer and what you don't get with Attorneys on Retainer. If you decide Attorneys on Retainer is right for you, we'd be honored to have you as a client of our law firm. We got a whole bunch of other fun videos. Like this video, subscribe to this video so you don't miss anything. These aren't all just reviews of other programs. As always, if you have questions or comments, leave them below in this video. We respond to all civilized comments. Andy and I do many critiques of self-defense incidents and other current topics involving issues of interest to the Second Amendment community. You can also hit the notification bell so you stay up to date every time we upload a new video. Don't miss out. If you want to speak with me directly, you can either call the law firm or just email me. It's Mark, M-A-R-C, at attorneysforfreedom.com. Thanks for listening.